kaisertv.com. It is always a pleasure to join you each month to share what's going on in our community and help you get up to date. And then you can also tell us uh, what you'd like to hear about in future broadcasts. Now it looks like we are now about to go live. Are you doing it? I did Facebook. have a message that said you're now live streaming. So maybe Perfect. you can Okay, that is fabulous. Got it. Okay, that is great. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the March edition of Coffee with Kathy. It is my pleasure to be with you today and share what's going on in the great city of Kaiser and to be joined by uh, my friends and regular contributors, Betty Harp from the Kaiser Fire District, Bob Shackelford from the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce, and Pastor Jose Dominguez from La Luz de Valle Church. Uh, Jose, um, Ramiro Navarro, who usually joins us from, the, from Chariots, was not able to join us this morning. He had something come up at work, but he just wanted to uh, share a few things that are going on. So later on in the broadcast, I'll share some of the highlights and encourage you to go to chariots.org to learn more. Just a few things love to catch you up with. Um, the cherry blossoms are out, spring has happened. The time change, hopefully for the last time, um, has happened. Um, but most importantly, Kaiser is going strong into 2022. It was my pleasure to visit with so many people on Tuesday with the State of the City Address. And I think that the theme this year is that after the turmoil and the trying to figure stuff out over the last two years, Kaiser, our people, our businesses, our city, we've landed on our feet. But we've landed on our feet not to stand still and go, okay, good, we arrived. But in order to be able to keep moving and to help others rise to their feet and also be able to keep moving with us. This is definitely a community where we don't wanna leave anybody behind and we want to keep everybody moving forward. Uh, one of the top highlights of course, is that our city manager, Adam Brown, will be starting work here on April 25th. He and his family will be moving here from Ontario, Oregon, and we are excited to welcome him to join the Kaiser community. 13 years ago, he applied for a job here as our assistant to the city manager, and he didn't give up. He's been watching for an opportunity to join Kaiser, and we agreed that this would be a good fit for our community. So we're excited to welcome him, and he's already been tuning in on many of the broadcasts so he can become familiar with our community and bring his experience to help us keep moving forward. The other big um, thing right now is allocating the ARPA funds, the American Recovery and Prosperity Act. We get so used to acronyms that we kind of have to remember to slow down. The Long Range Planning Task Force met on Monday night to go through a list of projects that uh, we would like to uh, recommend to the Budget Committee and then the City Council to move forward with. We've already used $1.3 million of our $8.8 .8 million allocation for projects that needed to be done this fiscal year. So that has already happened. Those projects are underway for uh, water infrastructure and um, also some of the expenses for the city to keep us going. We had a great conversation about how we use these one-time funds to make sure that they have a long-time benefit for the people of Kaiser. In our parks, at our civic center, our community center um, operations, and then the biggest conversations that will now become work sessions are around opportunities to leverage funds for the Kaiser Community Library to become a Kaiser Public Library, but do it our style, not a big building, big, big expenses, but to do it in a, that leverage off of the amazing work that has been done over the years by the volunteers and experts at the Kaiser Community Library. So stay tuned for that work session. We're getting ready to schedule it for March 28th. And then another work session about a proposal to partner with uh, Marion County on putting in turf fields at Kaiser Rapids Park. They would be two, uh, right now the, the concept is two turf fields for soccer or other field sports at Kaiser Rapids Park. So we're gonna be talking about what does that entail? What are the costs for operations and maintenance? 
and we're going to work through some of the um, some of the issues and, and opportunities that have come up with this proposal. So stay tuned for that one. That work session will be on April 11th. We are really looking forward to having these conversations about how we can take these dollars and invest them well for the entire community. The other thing I wanna point out, this is spring break. And even though I don't have children who are in school anymore, kids are gonna be out and about for the community. So even if you're not thinking spring break, you're at work, um, kids are going to be out and about. They're going to be enjoying the fresh air and sunshine. So please go slow, go safe, watch for kids who are outside playing, which is where they should be. And there's going to be a special event at Wallace House Park this week. And it's uh, going to be a raindrop um, search event. And it's got QR codes. Kids can do all sorts of fun things uh, to learn about water and water, uh, safe water the watershed and the environment. So go to the city website um, on the environmental division or on Facebook to learn more about this fun activity for kids of all ages down at Wallace House Park. Lastly, I would like to um, remind everybody that on Monday, I will be issuing a proclamation for the month of April for Child Abuse Prevention Month. I know that all of you watching and our entire community join me in being as active and proactive as possible to prevent child abuse in every form and every place for every child in our city. Not only are we going to help with prevention, but we also want families to thrive. And we are all involved in so many of the organizations that invest heavily in helping families thrive and be successful. It has been very exciting to see how family building blocks, their uh, success rate is extraordinary. It's up in the high 90s for families being able to stay together and thrive rather than children having to enter the foster care system. It's these investments that really help our kids be able to break any generational cycles of abuse, but also start generational cycles of success. So watch for Paint the Town Blue. And next month, it'll be um, our pleasure to welcome a uh, Claudia Rodriguez, I think I have her name right, from um, the Marion County Early Learning Hub, uh, who, who will talk to us about what they are doing to help families thrive in our community. So make, make sure you tune in to that on April 23rd at the April edition of Coffee with Kathy. I wanna thank a lot of people who showed up for the Civic Center cleanup last Saturday. A um, little bit of rain, but a lot of sunshine and a lot of hands came out there. A special thank you to the Claggett Creek Watershed Council, Kaiser Rotary, many community volunteers, and our, Mary, our McNary Air Force Junior ROTC and the McNary Leadership Club. All of those amazing high school students turned out bright and early, and they did an amazing job making our Civic Center campus sparkle. So thank you to those wonderful young volunteers who always show up and they make Kaiser proud. The one last thing I will share before I turn it over to Betty Hart from the Kaiser Fire District is at the end of April, on April 28th, we'll have uh, for the first time in two years, the breakfast that will uh, for fundraising for and raise community awareness for the Marion County Reentry Initiative. This is an amazing program that started right here to ensure that people who are leaving incarceration don't return to incarceration, but set people up on a pathway towards success with education, jobs, ID, job training, parenting classes, mental health care, physical health care, all the things that people need to leave incarceration and be on a path for their personal and family success. Over the last uh, 12 plus years, that program has helped people succeed and thrive in our community. So on April 28th, we will have a 7.30 in the morning breakfast to hear about what are the successes have been and where we are going as a county and as a community and helping support people for success. So with that, um, if you want to know any more, please go on to um, either my Facebook page or give me an email at clarkc at kaiser.org 
and love to connect you up with how you can continue to volunteer and make a difference in our community. Speaking of volunteers, people who show up all the time, Betty Hart, you and the board and our amazing fire district folks, share with us what's going on there. I'm delighted to do that this morning, Kathy. Thank you for having me. And uh, our uh, it's very timely. Our annual report is now completed uh, for 2021 and it's posted online. Uh, at kaiserfire.com so people can look there, but I'm gonna feature a few highlights uh, for this, uh, from, from this report. So uh, 2021 was a record-breaking year in many ways. Uh, we had over 6,400 calls and it was, which was um, a 22% increase from 2020. And 72% increase over the last 10 years. So the uh, number of calls has really gone up. The real reason, of course, uh, the jump was so high between 2020 and 2021 is because calls were down some in 2020. I think people were afraid to go to the emergency room many times because of COVID and uh, so didn't call uh, for an ambulance uh, when when they might have otherwise and probably weren't quite so hesitant in 2021. So of course the bulk of those calls, 77% of them are emergency medical calls. And um, so our uh, well-trained uh, firefighters, paramedics, many of them are also paramedics, um, come and help with immediate assistance and then transport if necessary. And the number of fire calls, even though we're a fire department, is only about 2%. There were something like 100 or so calls uh, in 2021. Um, of course, fires can be pretty devastating. And we, we did have some... Uh, unusual ones for it. So kind of to give you an example of how a day might go, and we usually have around 10 um, fire staff on duty uh, each day, um, give or take, depending on um, what exactly is going on with individuals. But during a 24-hour period on June 27th, for instance, crews responded to 12 emergency medical calls two fire alarms, uh, two mutual aid calls where we went to help another um, fire district, an outside fire uh, and a major structure fire involving three homes, two sheds and multiple spot, spot fires spread across the neighborhood. Um, and of course, this was the day we saw record breaking temperatures of 114 degrees, which uh, you know, you can imagine, um, of course, firefighters in all of their gear uh, fighting a fire at 114 degrees. Fortunately, they don't have to wear all that gear when they're responding to an emergency medical call. But it's not unusual to have days well, well the fire, of course, was pretty unusual, but to have days with so many calls in um, on top of each other. And because of the support we received from um, the Kaiser community, we actually are able to uh, meet this demand. And um, of course, budgeting is coming up and we'll be looking at what our particular needs are gonna be. In addition to all the calls, of course, that were here in, in Kaiser and surrounding area, because we do do a fair number of mutual aid calls, um, our firefighters did join other firefighters from around the state to fight uh, wildland fires. And uh, so there were something like three over 3,000 hours of uh, Kaiser firefighters on duty at conflagrations throughout the state. Uh, they were deployed to seven different fires. And uh, so then while they're out, uh, we do really work hard so that our um, community doesn't suffer from that. And uh, 
we can have we can respond to the uh, local calls as needed. Um, so we do receive reimbursement for um, the district for the cost of the employees who are out and our equipment. So that's uh, helpful. And this year we received about three hundred fifty thousand dollars in reimbursement for our work with the conflagrations. It does really add though to the overall challenge and stress of, um, of the employees because uh, of course, when firefighters gone, others have to work overtime and that sort of thing. So it's, um, it's a big, big job for everybody involved. And uh, so we, we do cover a 10 and a half square mile area for a fire suppression and um, emergency medical services because we have mutual aid um, agreements with the surrounding areas. We often re respond to calls uh, for Salem or Marion County or uh, even sometimes further away, but not too often. Of course, a big part of what the fire district does is public education and outreach. Um, we have staff who uh, can help anyone uh, install a car seat, show you how to do that so that your little little TD ones are safe in the car. And some of those are a little, I think, not that um, easy to just decide how to do it. So uh, don't hesitate to contact the fire district staff and uh, get some help for that. Um, they do a lot of public education um, in, into the school uh, in particular, and uh, sometimes with um, having groups of people come to the station. And uh, we do a lot of hands-only CPR and um, training and how to use an AED. So we do have AED, AEDs to, uh, let's see, I know they're defibrillators. So I, the A is probably automatic. Anyway, electrical defibrillators probably is what they are. And so we do have some to loan if you are having an event where um, you, you, there isn't one available and you would like to borrow one, you can contact the fire district uh, and see about that. We also have a smoke alarm program uh, where a member of our um, uh, public education staff will come into your home, test your smoke alarms, replace those. The fire, Kaiser Fire Foundation has purchased over 300 smoke alarms for the program. And uh, uh, so it's uh, an important thing for people to do to be sure that their smoke alarms, uh, it's easy for 10 years to fly by. And interestingly, And up, most smoke alarms today are designed so that you don't replace batteries, you replace smoke alarms, pretty much. The batteries will last 10 years for the most part, and then you replace the whole thing. Um, anyway, and uh, speaking of the station, we have finally uh, uh, decided that it, it is okay for the station to be open. Um, and <laughs> yes, uh, so uh, for many months, um, we have. Uh, on a monthly basis declared an emergency to keep the station closed and uh, the board of directors has been meeting online. We did agree to uh, meet again online in April, even though the station will be closed. And then of course, uh, in May, we'll have our um, budget committee meeting and our regular meeting and forward having those in person okay. is that Mother's Day pancake breakfast is in, uh, expected to be on this year. So uh, we look all look forward to that. It's such a great um, uh, event. Oh, 2019 was the last time we had a Mother's Day breakfast. Uh, and 
we probably so we're we're really looking forward to that i think so that's kind of a highlight i i guess i would be remiss if i didn't mention that the district received an innovative award year for some of the uh uh work that they in terms of and uh helping young people learn about fire life safety uh, kinds of things. And so uh, I'm pretty proud of the district uh, for that award. I mean, that's a really great thing. So that's pretty much what I have for now. People can, you know, go online. There's more in, uh, well, if you're having trouble going to sleep, you might really enjoy reading the rest of the <laughs> report, but it, it, it is very enlightening, I think. And so um, I was really pleased to be able to share some of that with you today. Well, thank you, Betty. And in uh, the comments on our Facebook Live, I've put in um, the website and some of the um, things you've brought up. So people, when they watch this program again, can see, make sure they mark their calendars for the pancake breakfast and make sure they, since we've had the time change, change if you do have a battery change it. yes well i i i think i want to also mention uh we talked about this on another note not related to the fire district but i do uh i do volunteer for a number of organizations in the community and one of the groups that i volunteer for is the boys and girls club i just do things once in a while and uh they're having their uh event in person this year it's going to be a happy hour from 4 30 to 6 on april 7th so um if somebody is interested in attending that they're going to be uh premiering the new uh club that's being built out on lancaster uh, which is a going to be a great big deal serving a whole new area of our community so um and calling the boys and girls club letting them know you'd be interested is a great way to help help with that particular program lots of stuff that has gone on behind the scenes during the last two years to make a difference for the kids in our our communities that unless you you have children involved in them you may not know and uh boys and girls club is is one of those so anyway thanks well thank you and as part of our um awareness and involvement for child abuse prevention. The Boys and Girls Club have continued to be one of the most critical organizations to help our young people um, thrive and go on to incredible leadership and educational opportunities. So I'm excited to hear about the expansion of the Boys and Girls Services and Rather than competing, our organizations all work together to find the best fit for the young people, youth and young adults in our community um, to be able to find a place where they can belong and thrive. So thank you, Betty. Um, she and her late husband, Mike, huge, huge, huge supporters of the Boys and Girls Club over the years. And I'm glad you're continuing to make sure we stay connected with the Boys and Girls Club. Keep them going. Thank you, Betty. Pastor Dominguez, it's so good to see you. And you just got back from an amazing trip. We'd love to hear about as you begin to process some of your experiences and help us keep up to date with what's going on in our great community. Welcome home, Pastor. Well, thank you. It's good to be on. Thank you, uh, Kathy, uh, for allowing us to, to be together. Yeah, we just got back from uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Um, we were invited a group of 30 community leaders we went to uh alabama and we got immersed in the civil rights movement we we were so it was kind of like an emotional roller coaster you know some some of you know um our history that part of our history in the 1960s was a was a real tough and a rough time and uh you know, we we learned so much. We went to several museums, um, uh, talking ab about Black history. Uh, we went to uh, we, we went to the great uh, 16th Baptist Church, uh, where Martin Luther King 
um, began as a minister there. It's a, there's a funny story there that uh, they actually voted out uh, uh, the other one of their pastors, the pastor that they had there, because they didn't want him to be too involved in community affairs, didn't want to be too political. So Martin Luther King gets chosen. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was kind of ironic, right? But, uh, but we got to see uh, a lot of different sites. We actually went to Martin Luther King's home. Um, we, we, were, we were there with the other leaders. Um, but, but more than that, we were, we were touched in our heart as the civil rights movement, uh, you know, as the, as the people came together uh, to fight injustices. Uh, to, to, to fight segregation, uh, to, to get their rights to vote, uh, well, all of us to get the right to vote. And it was a story of faith. It was a story of hope. It was a story of love. And it was, it was such an amazing, there's just so many uh, high points. And I come back very encouraged, very motivated um, to love on our city to include people in the circle of human concern. Um, there, um, our, our black uh, community uh, in Selma, in Montgomery, in Alabama, were fighting to be a part of that circle of human concern. They desired to be part of it. And the beauty of all of, all of our trip, we're still reflecting, we're still uh, you know, trying to get through all of what we saw and all of the information, uh, we saw ordinary people that stood, they persevered, they uh, saw a struggle, they desired to change their society, change their city, and uh, they did that. And they did that through... Uh, you know, they did that through unity. They were determined, the people were determined to be united in purpose. And the beauty of it is, is that there were, not only it was a movement of black people, but it was a movement of Caucasian people and other people who stood with uh, the justices, uh, that which was right. And it was just such an awesome thing to see how a community who was fighting for uh, the right to vote and the right to be uh, in school, just like anybody else with other people of different races. It was just so awesome to see how everyone banded together, united together, came together for rights and privileges that they all deserve. They deserve the, the human, human privileges. But we also saw Black heroes that uh, Martin Luther King, Fred Shackelford, many, many names, Rosa Parks. We were there uh, at the uh, Memorial of Rosa Parks. They have one there in downtown uh, Montgomery. And uh, of course, Rosa Parks was the lady that uh, was, was on the bus, refused to get off the bus. Uh, the, she was told to get off the bus because she was colored. And that was the part of our history where there were People were segregated, the coloreds and the and 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 the well the coloreds and the whites and and that was a there was a difficult moment, but she stood firm and uh, she uh, her story is told. I don't really have the time to tell all the story, but but what I saw was that there were uh, youth that were involved, there were uh, women who were involved, children were involved. Um, you know, uh, adults and elderly people and pastors and leaders of the community all came together. We also, we walked the uh, Edmund Pettus Bridge, the, uh, there in Selma, Montgomery, uh, or Selma, I'm sorry. Uh, we walked the bridge, that was very, very famous bridge where uh, the civil rights movement, um, um, you know, uh, the people came together to, uh, give a statement that they wanted human human rights but uh, there's a story and it really just really touched my heart it was a story of a caucasian man his name was joseph reeb joseph reeb was from boston and he heard about the march in selma 
and uh, as a minister, he, he says, I am going to go to Selma and I'm going to stand with the civil rights movement. I'm going to stand for justice. And the beauty of this is this, this man didn't need to go to Selma. He seized his moment. He seized his responsibility and he went. And unfortunately, um, on, a, on a day called Bloody Sunday, there on the Selma Bridge, uh, Joseph Reed was killed. He was, he was killed. And they had a memorial of, of Joseph Reed. And, but that, that really touched my heart. And that told me that I'm in the, I've, the Lord's placed me in, in, in Kaiser. So I need to seize my moment. I need to take responsibility for the people that are not in the circle of human concern and bring them to uh, the table and bring them uh, to a place where uh, they belong. Uh, uh, and and uh, I came back just so encouraged. I could just say so much more, but uh, what really touched me was the first night when actual people that were in the civil rights movement were able to give their experiences. They were able to tell us uh, how they banded together, how they came together, how in the midst of violence, they were able to show love and they were able to be nonviolent and how the movement, and I just finished with this, that the movement really we, we, we talk about Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther King was just the face of the movement. The people who really made the difference in the, in the civil rights movement were the black women. The women, kudos to the women, to the black women. They stood in the gap. They gave permission for their children to go, uh, you know, uh, to go and help in the march. Uh, they were instrumental in, in standing and uh, persevering and going forward. It was an amazing trip. We, we had a gathering this week with all of the people who went and we shared our stories. Uh, we shared what we're gonna do once we come back into the city. And I'm just so excited about being able to apply what we learned uh, and, and, and bring it back to Kaiser. But uh, uh, changing the subject a little bit, uh, we're thankful that it is spring and uh, Light of the Valley Church is, um, we're getting set to release some things in our community. Uh, things have opened up. We're, we're, we're so thankful. Um, I think people are, we're seeing the sun and we're, <laughs> obviously we're seeing rain, but nonetheless, we're happy that uh, uh, spring is here and that we're getting ready for our, our big Easter, uh, um, Easter celebration. Uh, I know, uh, children love Easter, uh, the candy and all the stuff. But uh, on Easter, we have a we have a, a message that we just want to share a message of hope. But uh, uh, I think that's that's about it. Our trip was amazing. I'm still processing it all, and uh, it was a, it was a great time with my fellow leaders of the community. We all came back encouraged. We all came back wanting to work together. I think that is extraordinarily powerful. And I would love to visit with you about sharing as you begin to unpack the, um, the tremendous um, learnings and opportunities, share that especially with our Community Diversity Engagement Committee um, to be able to have that conversation as well and bring that into uh, what we can take from that that would apply in our city um, and community engagement and inclusion. Thank you so much, Pastor, for sharing that and also looking yes. forward to our wonderful Easter celebrations. In yes, April. thank you for allowing me to share and uh, you'll all, you all have a good day today. Thank you. So let's back clean up um, with Bob Shackelford from the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce. There's tons going on with the chamber, with our businesses, which livelihood of so many people in our community rely on our small businesses. And the Kaiser Chamber just keeps on being there for our businesses, supporting them and growing 
community through our business sector. Bob, it's always good to see you. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so the chamber, we had a great luncheon last week for Mayor Clark. I, unfortunately, if you uh, missed it, it was a great uh, turnout. We had a good, good event. So uh, like Kathy said, we have a lot of stuff changing. We've been going round and round, uh, doing a lot of events and rescheduling a lot of events. Um, we've had a lot that we're so close together that we're kind of we're spreading it out. So it's just not all at, at one time of the year. So the biggest thing is we've changed the date of the Kaiser Fest to the second week of August. A um, couple of reasons we've done that because May, third week of May has been so unpredictable for weather. And of course, we have the parade and the golf tournaments. So um, I brought it about in front of the board. It wasn't too easy or it wasn't too hard to get it changed. Let's put it that way. Everyone was pretty fortunate and wanted me to get us, let's get it changed because of the weather's just too unpredictable in May. That being said though, we're still having the women's uh, Percy event and we're having the Bloom and Iris Open, which will be the second year of the Bloom and Iris Open. So we have a golf tournament. Uh, the No Group, the Network of Women of Kaiser, um, has a big Percy event, which is 80s theme. So if you haven't got your tickets for that, it's a lot of fun. Um, the men of action help out with that event. Um, about eight or nine of us help the ladies out. They have a good time. It's, it's a crazy party for them, but it raises a lot of money. Again, the whole purpose of it is to raise money for the Christmas giving basket in December. We know it's a little far away now than it used to be when we used to have the Percy event in September, but we feel that it'll give us an opportunity to let everyone get on board, raise a lot more money for the children and the families that need the Christmas boxes. Um, and then in August, of course, like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna have the parade, we're gonna have Crown the Hound, we're gonna do all the same uh, Kaiser events, uh, the festival, we're gonna have a golf tournament again, of course, so we have two golf tournaments. We'll have one in May and one in August. So if you're interested in, in joining either one of those, get a hold of the chamber. It's a four-man scramble. So team of four, uh, gather a couple people, a few people, and put a team together. You don't have to be a golf expert. Just come out and have fun, uh, enjoy lunch, and hopefully the weather is perfect for both events, May and August. So a um, couple other things. Uh, with the chamber, we've hired a third person for the chamber. Uh, Corey's doing a great job. Fatima's doing a great job. But we're just getting bombarded and growing so fast that we've decided to take on another employer, employee. Jill, I believe her last name is Gus. Don't quote me on that. But she's doing a great job. She'll, she'll be a great fit. So that'll help Fatima and uh, Corey relieve a little of the work. Um, let's see, we have a scheduled, we're going to try something. We have greeters every Tuesday. And if you don't know what greeters is, it's a uh, chamber, uh, board members and businesses that meet every Tuesday, either at their business to promote their business or share what they do, or if they don't have a facility big enough, we've been fortunate that the rec, which is the old town and country bowling alley, uh, Tim and Valor mentoring down there allows us to use all their sound equipment and tables and chairs, and there's plenty of room. So we've had a lot more people getting involved in greeters that didn't think they had enough room to host us. We have about 40 to 60 people every Tuesday. So it's a great turnout. And now that we have more room, you know, the small businesses can, uh, like I said, Tim at Valor Mentoring opens the door for whoever wants to share their business with the rest of the community. Um, we're gonna try, if you've never been to one, you don't have to be a chamber member to be involved in one. We like to uh, open the door to anyone that wants to show up and see what it's all about. Of course, you know, we'd like you to join the chamber, but feel free to come talk to me. Uh, there's plenty of people that will make you feel comfortable and welcome. Uh, you know, it's a great group of people, but we're going to try something. We haven't, I, I was looking at my calendar. I couldn't find the date on it, but we'll get back to that. Um, we're going to try to start a couple evening greeters uh, once a month. We're gonna meet down at the golf course, uh, McNary Golf Course, and 
we feel that there's a lot of people that, you know, they work for the in the middle of the day, they can't come to greeters at 830 in the morning for an hour and network. So we want to share the ability for the people that can't get to the 830 meeting to come out and we'll probably have it around 530 or six for an hour. So at the at the golf course, we won't have hors d'oeuvres. And I know I've had a meeting with David Jarodnik. Um, I don't know how many people know this. So the McNary Golf Course, the View Restaurant and the golf course is changed under new management now. And David Jarodnik has taken over the restaurant and doing a great job. So we've had a meeting with him. They're willing to help sponsor um, the meeting and along with the chamber. So we're hoping that will be a good um, activity to get more people involved in the evening. If you haven't been to the restaurant lately, you need to try it. Um, I went there last night for dinner, Dave and I and Marsha and Kyle and his wife, we went there for dinner last night. Very good, the service was good, the food was good. The atmosphere is great, a lot of people. Um, so if you haven't tried the view lately, give it a shot. I can guarantee it's changed a lot. Um, so, and of course, keep everything local. My whole slogan, buy local, keep it local. Anytime I need anything done or someone calls me or asks me, I get in the chamber, get in the directory and find out who's a chamber member and try to share as much as I can with the city of Kaiser. Um, it doesn't always happen, but I, I start with that first. So on that note, let's see, I'm excited about the Kaiser Fest uh, changing the date. Uh, there's more to come on that. I won't share that right now, but um, some of you might know, but we're still working on some things on that. Um, so the network of women, the Percy Auction, I heard Fred Shackelford, I might have to Google that name and get some history on that. Um, and then I believe that's about it for the chamber for this week. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty more, but uh, we're going to start having our Wednesday meetings starting next Wednesday for our Kaiser Fest meeting. I know it's five months away, but it takes a lot of planning, tents, bands, security, fence, bathrooms, there's just a load of items that need to be done. So we're going to start having that meeting uh, every Wednesday at three o'clock. It's a Kaiser Fest committee meeting, but if anyone feels they want to show up and voice their opinion, get a hold of me or record at the chamber and we'll see if we can find a spot for you. Um, on that note, the sun's out at my house. It's time to get some things done and I appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Bob. Really appreciate you coming on and appreciate the work of the chamber. It's so exciting that Jill has been brought on board to um, round out the staff there at the chamber. And it says a lot about our business community when we need to expand um, the services there to meet the needs of our businesses. That um, I hope that sends a message of thriving and that everybody helping each other out. So we're really excited for uh, the future and Kaiser landing on our feet and locking arms, moving forward to help everybody into our a very strong and thriving future. So thank you so much, Bob. We're looking forward to that uh, August event as well. Um, I really appreciate uh, Bob showing up for the West Kaiser Neighborhood Association, the uh, city council, just making sure people know and can have input on how this wonderful event for celebrating our community will continue to uh, thrive as a community event, just a different date. And you're right, a little less soggy. Um, I remember being out at some of the Kaiser Fest where the wind's coming sideways and bringing the rain with it. And yeah, we love our rain and it keeps us green, but not to be outside in it. I'd rather be curled up by the fire like my cat who says, hey, peace out, I'm gonna be you know, stay inside. Well, fabulous stuff. I do want to thank, um, again, the Chamber for hosting the State of the City Address. The sponsors for that event were PGE, and really appreciate uh, Dave Robertson and Wendy Valise being there from um, from PGE, and uh, Kevin Mannix Law Firm, and uh, former Senator Mannix was there also. I really appreciate their sponsorship for this year's State of the City Address. The thing I would like to, oh, the other thing is I want to um, share a couple of things from Chariots. They are moving forward with the um, 
the uh, charging station out at Kaiser, our Kaiser Transit Center. When we built that um, here in Kaiser, it was, um, you know, had some fantastic pieces for sustainability with the green roof, geothermal heating and so forth. And they're continuing to invest in that center with now um, electric charging that will be when the bus pulls in, it will uh, interface with a charger and charge while it's sitting there. Um, kind of like the little one you have for your cell phone, if you put it on top, it charges. This is just big scale. So it's really exciting that uh, Chariots is investing in innovative opportunities and the Kaiser Transit Center is the place they want to make that investment. It's a good fit for our community and it's a good fit for our region. Also, it's so exciting to see the buses running on the weekends and on holidays. It's just been fantastic to make sure that people can get to where they need to be uh, seven days a week as we've needed for such a very long time. It gets people uh, the services that they need. So with that, it's been great to visit with all of you today. I'm with Bob. It's sunny outside. Let's make hay while the sun shines. It's so wonderful to uh, visit with you and with Betty Hart from the Kaiser Fire District Board of Directors, Pastor Jose Dominguez from La Luce Valle Church, and Bob Shackelford from the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce. Join us next time on April 23rd for the April edition of Coffee with Kathy. We'll see you then.